Well, this week on Trash to Treasure Thursday, I thought I would show you how to make an instant antique picture frame or mirror frame. So join me today and see how easy and quick this project is. Right, depending on what you're going to use your frame for, you can make it out of just about anything and the decorating technique that I'm going to show you after we make our frames, I think you could even use on full size frames. This is a project that can translate to any scale uh, very easily. So definitely for the dollhouse or the Barbie house, but quite frankly I can see making frames like this or, or decorating them and using for real pictures for gifts. Um, because it's kind of a cool looking technique. Now this one is done just with plain old craft sticks, just regular, you know, like the kind you'd salvage out of a, a frozen popsicle or something. This one, and I know I made it crooked, ignore the fact that I didn't get my frame squared. Um, <laughs> this was just my first trial to make sure this, make sure I was remembering how to do this correctly. This one's made out of skinny sticks like I will be showing you today. And I've just cut my skinny sticks um, I pre-cut them. You, we all know how to cut wood. Um, two short sides the same length and two long sides the same length. And I am going to attempt to do this without clamping because my clamps would, would get in view of the camera. So you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing. And I am using my two glue technique. If you've watched many of my videos, you know how much I love this technique. Now, I'm going to put some super glue or CA glue. And yes, this will glue down to my work tile. That's okay. I'm going to pop it off later. And because it's such a small area of glue, we are going to reinforce this when we get after the glue is dry. So, drops of glue on the ends of those. Make sure these are up where, where the camera can see them, not necessarily where they're easy to work on. Dip the ends into our tacky glue. And I do recommend a nice thick tacky glue for this because it just makes it easier. It sets up a little better than a plain white glue. And remember we work on a tile because we can scrape all this gunk off the tile later. I need to scrape this one. It's full of paint again. And that's all there is to this. Now this glue, the glues need to dry. If you ha aren't familiar with the technique of using the super glue and the tacky glue, they actually, it holds better and faster. The super glue almost works like a clamp for your tacky glue. The tacky glue is what will hold it long term. The super glue kind of holds it in place for now. And we will pop this off when it's dry. I'm going to very carefully use my paint scraper to pop it off the tile. So let's let the paint dry and I'll be back. So now the glue has had time to set up so we need to pop this off of the tile. And our next step is, it's totally optional, but especially if you are going to display this or even store it before you display it, not without, um, you know, with it just loose, I like to glue a piece of paper and then I'm going to cut out the extra so it just is covering the back. You'll see here in a second. Not very, not difficult at all. We just... I just want to reinforce these joints because, remember, that's not a very big area that we are have available to glue on this. So I, uh, and I don't want very much glue here. If you have yes paste like we use for wallpapering in dollhouses, this would, that would be a good thing to use here, but it's not a necessity. I need a little more glue than I got. And we're putting this paper on now so that 
number one, so it won't fall apart while we're working on it. But also then we can disguise it when we paint. So it won't really even show. We'll disguise the edges of it anyway. And there, and since I want that to stay flat, I'm going to put my glue in its mug right on top of it. That'll hold it down flat until it's dry, and then I'll be back. All right, so now what I want to do is cut off the extra paper. I'm just using scissors around the edge. You know, this isn't a precise thing. Um, I'll use my knife probably on the inside. on some cardboard. I don't want to have to move my cutting table over, cutting mat all the way over here. Once again, this step, putting the paper, the cardstock, and this is um, like scrapbooking cardstock that I put on the back. It just happens to be a scrap that was left from another project that I did. All right, now we have that. And, yeah, that's fine. So now we need to add our, what is going to make this look like it's carved. This one is the same size wood, and I used this for it. And that's what I'm going to use for the one today. This one, I use this narrow lace. Um, and it works just fine. It's not as detailed, obviously, because the lace itself is not as detailed. Um, just see what you've got, either what you have at home, if you sew at all or have any trim, you might have something. Otherwise, talk to your friends that sew or go to the fabric store. This is not very expensive, and we're not using a very big piece. So, I'm going to start cutting. For this one, I like to kind of miter the edge, the corners. I'm not, you know, not doing a precise job. It doesn't need to be exact. So I'm going to do that. And because lace has a little bit of give to it, we can kind of move it around a little and make it, if it doesn't, come out quite right when you cut it, you can you can kind of stretch it or bunch it a little bit and it'll still look okay. I should have had my glue upside down. I don't know why I put my glue in the cup right side up. I never store my glue right side up. There we go. And it just takes a little bit of glue. Let's see, it's. I do like to keep that edge straight with the edge. Oh, and with this, on this one, I did cut off. You can see this little part here. I cut off this part of the lace. I don't know. Hopefully, the camera's showing that because it was just a little bit too wide. Um, it's okay if it's not perfect. Actually, these look a little better if they're not perfect if you're trying to make them look like they're really old. Um, I've been going through more of my mom's stuff that I inherited over the last year and there's a oh, huge amount of old pictures and a lot of them are in frames like these are supposed to look like and they're, you know, they've been stored and they've been knocked around and they've been handed down and, you know, and moved from here, there and everywhere over the, you know, hundred or so years they've been around so they're not in perfect shape. They're kind of banged up and and that's okay so it's okay if ours aren't perfect here but we do want this to lay down 
So since that's the look we're going for. Now if you wanted to make these look all nice, new, and precise, you'd need to be a little more careful. And by the way, I think if you're looking for an easy, kind of cool gift for somebody, for the kids to make, I think, I haven't tried it, but I think you could get those really plain frames that are just like flat wood pieces that are like real size. And I bet you could put wider lace or layers of wider lace and do the same kind of thing. Paint it with a metallic paint and then wash it with a gold paint or with a black wash and you know be a cool Christmas gift for the kids to make that would be really inexpensive. Just use wider lace on the wider pieces of wood. It should work. If somebody does it, let me know. Email me or private message me or something and let me know that you tried it. I'd love to see how that works because I was thinking when I was doing this, this, when my kids were little, this would have been the kind of thing they would have made for old like grandma and grandpa, because we, when my kids were little, I always made them make their, their Christmas gifts and stuff they gave to, especially their grandparents. It's kind of cool, because now my daughter still loves to craft things, and she works at Michael's, and she still makes a lot of the gifts that she makes, that she gives, so... And it also means that she's always there. She gets picked to demo stuff a lot of times, too, because she knows how to do stuff. Okay, so now that glue needs to dry. It's Like I said, it's okay if it's a little messy. That's fine. And then we'll, when this glue dries, we'll start the painting process. All right, now we need to paint. This is all dry. Um, I did these two different ways. We are going to use a bronze paint, which is this one. It's called metallic bronze, and I checked the um, website, this color is still available. So this this is one you can get. Now one thing about these metallic paints, in my opinion, they don't cover well if you put them over ba just the, um, the plain wood. You need to base coat. And your base coat color can be, it can vary. And I made a little tester here. Um, this one that I did in my mock-up, I used the golden brown, which is what I'm using today also. For this one, I actually put black under it, um, and it gave a little bit different effect. We are going to do a, a black wash over the top, too. Then I got to thinking, a long time ago I used to watch a show on TV with a guy that restored full-size furniture, and whenever he did a bronze paint, he always put red under it. So I got out the red, and then I got to thinking, well, the opposite on the color wheel of red is green, so I tried some green. So those are some different possibilities. Use what you've got. Um, for today, for what I want this to look like, I'm using the golden brown. And I'm just going to need a little bit of paint. I'm just gonna, like, like a lot of times, I'm just going to put it out on the work tile. Now you can paint that black paper on the back if you desire. I'm not going to bother, but it's totally paintable. Um, it will have paint slopped over on it, so if it's going to be, if your frame will be displayed where the back will show, you might want to paint the back. But I'm not worried about it for right now. I like to paint those edges and then the inside edges. And any paper that you didn't get trimmed off, you'll need to get painted now. And it will blend in. Once it's painted, it blends in. Because it shows a little bit there. Now, and I've got a rather soft brush because I need to get down into that detail. And it's almost like a, like a blotting painting method here because you want to get down in those holes I did find with this other kind of lace that I used on here, I really should have base coated before I started, before I glued the lace down. So if you're using a thinner lace, you know, one of the laces with that's thinner in weight but has a more more thread to it, where it covers more, you might want to base coat under it, but that's up to you. It also depends on what color you're base coating under it. I just had to base coat twice to get it covered. Need a little more paint. I 
and uh, be sure and check the blog post. I'll have the color names and everything for all the colors I, I used and I'll try to have pictures, I'll try to remember to take a picture of the lace itself too so you can have a something to go by on that. Okay, now this will need to dry all the way. Oh, and try to wipe your excess paint out. In fact, that's a little heavy there. And sometimes it gets awfully heavy on the top in order to get down into the, the little holes in the lace. So kind of blot it off again. I'm trying to get it out of those so it doesn't fill in. Because the idea here is the design is not going to show up a lot until you put the black wash over the bronze paint. That's when the, the design will really pop and look like the antique frame. So this paint needs to dry and then we'll be back. Alright, so my um, paint is now dry so now it's time to put on a coat of the bronze. And you will find the metallic paints, at least I find that they are a little thinner than the regular craft paints. Uh, they usually are a little more expensive. And again, I'm using a pretty soft brush because I want to get down into the detail. But because we used a base coat that was almost the same color, this is pretty much going to cover in one coat now. Where if we would have not base coated, there would have been a couple of coats. All right, and that's really all there is to this coat of paint. Um, I'm going to let this dry, and then we'll be back. We'll put the wash on and see what so it looks the like. The bronze first. paint is now completely dried. So what we are going to do is we need to kind of antique this. We don't want it to look brand new, at least I don't. So I'm going to put a little bit of black paint out. Come on. We don't need much for this step. And I have just some water. This is like a water bottle lid. Let me get paint. Dip my paintbrush into the paint and then into the water. Kind of mix them together on your brush. And the paint, because I painted this on the tile, the frame is kind of glued down, so it's not going to walk around on me, which is kind of what I want for this stuff. Now, quickly grab a paper towel. And want a little more. And it's up to you how much you put on. You know, the older the frame, the the more black it's going to be. Is so. And even the ones that I have that are like really old and really grungy, they, for some reason they end up with like one spot that's really shiny and the rest of the uh, frame is really gross looking. So. so now that needs to dry and then we'll all be right. all done. So here's our frame. It's all dry. It's finished. I think that turned out really cool. I hope you enjoyed this Trash to Treasure Thursday project. Be sure to check the blog post. I always give more information in the blog. Be sure to check us on Facebook and come back again and see what we do next time.